And next we have your maid of honor this evening, Monica's sister, the lovely Mary Beth Pate. I met Monica um, in a hospital in Ohio on June 2nd, 1982. Mike and Marlene brought us together. Thanks, Big Daddy. Our relationship was great when we were little. Everything was always Monica's fault, and people bought me things that were purple. And my brothers they would pin her down on the floor and gleek on her face. And I'd just stand in the corner and cry because I felt the pain that she was going through. <laughs> it's rough being you know, these two girls. And when I'd get mad at her, I'd pull her hair and then run and tell mom, and everything was still her fault. So things just worked out great between the two of us. It was a good relationship. But like all <laughs> Like all relationships, they go through ups and downs, and um, ours, ours went through some. Kimberly told me at the bachelorette party, she was like, you guys bought a lot. And I was like, did we? But we did. <laughs> and I think the point <laughs> where our relationship hit the roughest point was um, when I found out that Monica was going out with my mom on secret shopping trips, and they didn't tell me. They didn't even put it down. <laughs> So that's, that's what you do when you want to um, train people to steal your clothes. So she set me up for all that drama. <laughs> but on a more serious note, Monica, having you as an older sister has been such a privilege and a blessing. And I admire your strength so much. And I saw that growing up with the boys and to this day, how you handle situations, but the thing that I admire most about you is the way that you treat people and how people are so drawn to you because of that warm and comforting energy that you have. And that's why you love her going, right? <laughs> and also, you're the, the center of our family. You bring everyone together. And you're the glue that just holds us together and keeps us communicating. So, I'm the golden child, and you're the glue. <laughs> beforehand that he wasn't her type. She was like, hey, Glenn, he's not my type. And um, he insisted, you know, let's just go out for a drink. And so they went to two rows, and good choice, Monica, on the bar. That's where Mark worked. So Mark was the default, working at the bar in the background. So if it went bad with Glenn, you know, she could feel like, oh, this guy's gone, Mark, let's go party. Um, but when she came back from the date the next day, just talking about Glenn, you could tell that he was something really special and that she cared about you a lot. So, I met Glenn a few times and I was like, yeah, Monica kept on asking me like, what do you think of him, what do you think of him? And I was like, yeah, he's all right, he's all right, he's real quiet, you know? But then once Glenn started making fun of everyone and like, you could see his dry sense of humor, he's just gonna dry squid, I love it. I was like, oh God, I love this guy. <laughs> so, but the moment when I knew that Monica was going to marry this guy was when we were all eating dinner at the parents' house. And Monica and, Monica and Glenn were eating dinner off the same plate. And I kind of wanted to throw up a little bit. <laughs> yeah, that's cute. Yeah, he's the guy. I was happy with that. And Glenn, I love you like a brother. And I feel so blessed that you're in our family now. And you just fit right in. And we now have rolls and corn at every meal because of Glenn. Because when we don't, he asked Marlene 
Where are the roles? You know, so we have roles. No one really eats them, but Glenn. But it's a mix. So. <laughs> Give it away, DJ. Let's do it. <laughs> 